Hello, um, join me for a <laughs> check-in video. <laughs> um, not sure maybe uh, you'll notice or not, I don't know, um, but it's actually raining outside right now. Um, so there will be sounds of rain and there may be the sounds of thunder as well. So yeah, watch out for that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's do a reading check-in while I am folding laundry because it just started raining and so I just got some, you know, I just got my clothes from outside, from the sun and they're all dry, sun-dried and crisp right now, you know, um, I really love the smell of um, sun-dried laundry, you know, it's one of the things that make me feel very very relaxed. I don't know why. Um, you know, I always wonder how people uh, who live in places where, you know, they don't get a lot of, like, sun all year long, uh, you know, places with, say, uh, four seasons, how they dry their clothes in the older times, you know. I know that these days we have these things called dryers. <laughs> um, and I can appreciate the smell of laundry from dryers, but uh, you know that 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 smell that you have after you dry your clothes outside under the sun, and that feeling of stiffness of the clothes <laughs> and the warmth of the clothes, um, all of those things combined together, they they provide this like really cozy feeling. So. Um, you know, that's why I really like doing laundry, um, I really like collecting clothes from under the sun and I like to fold them because it's relaxing. But anyway, let's get back to check-in. Um, I have three books this time and I'm going to start with the first one that I didn't particularly like. This one is Rosamund Pilcher's The End of Summer. Um, so I was kind of interested in uh, Rosamund Pilcher's book because I got The Shell Seekers, but then that book was like really thick and uh, I don't know where my copy is right now, so uh, I might read that um, at another date, but uh, you know, uh, I, I got this book for like really cheap. Uh, I got it for like only two ringgit. Uh, don't bother convert that to USD because it's like, you know, really cheap. <laughs> but anyway, um, I brought this book uh, to a vacation that my family and I had once. We had this kind of like staycation at a hotel and I thought I just kind of want to bring a book that is sort of cozy for the vacation you know, because I kind of like the image of you know uh, relaxing with a book doing nothing. Um, so I was trying to achieve that aesthetics but alas it didn't really happen because this book sort of sucked. <laughs> um, I, you know, the the end of summer is about this uh, this girl, not girl, this uh, young woman named uh, Jane. And so Jane is uh, living in California with um, her father. But then at the same time, uh, Jane has been like reminiscing a lot about her uh, childhood home in Scotland. Uh, she has been thinking a lot about Scotland and really missing Scotland, especially her cousin Sinclair, whom she admired and adored so much. And so um, one day she got the opportunity to go back to uh, Scotland. Um, and at that time, while, uh, you know, around the time when she uh, is able to go back there, um, her life in California is just kind of not very satisfactory, you know, the, a lot of things just doesn't, you know, just don't feel right for her. So she got back to Scotland and initially she's really happy about like going back to where her childhood um, was, you know, um, she has this like really rosy tinted view of how things are. Um, back in Scotland and she's really happy about meeting Sinclair again but then uh, some dark family secrets emerge um, and those 
dark secrets involved her cousin. And basically the story is about how her expectation, you know, the, the, the wonderful things that she expects from uh, her childhood home, from her cousin, from uh, uh, this, this life in Scotland, how those things are kind of shattered. So I think the premise is kind of interesting, but uh, at the same time, I feel like maybe this book sort of suffers due to the fact that it's short. Um, usually I like short books, but maybe this time because it's short that the story suffers. I think that uh, the characterization of Jane is very thin. Um, I don't really care about what happens to her. She doesn't seem to have like a reason to exist. You know what I mean? Like um, she's just a character that that happens to have this kind of rosy expectation on things and and get disappointed in the process, and that's pretty much it. Like. I think you're supposed to care why Jane or you know, why a character, a character's expectation is shattered in the story, you know, because uh, a story is supposed to like bring you to the same level as the character, get you to sympathize with the character. Um, but then in this book, I just don't feel like I really care about um, Jane's fantasy being shattered. Like when she discovers those lousy things that she eventually discovers. I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I just want this story to be over. It's just really boring. And um, some of the characters, the characterizations are kind of thin as well, almost like cardboard cutout. Sinclair, um, the cousin, uh, at first we only know him from Jane's flashback, but then Afterwards, once we get to know him, he just doesn't seem like a really layered character. He feels like a, um, uh, a very one-dimensional, uh, almost villainy kind of a character, you know. So, um, it, it, it's just kind of unsatisfying to... Um, to be honest, so this book I didn't rate it very high. I gave it like two stars, two out of five stars. So um, after I finished the end of summer, I finished another book. Um, it's called So Long a Letter, <laughs> and it was written by Mariama Ba, a Senegalese writer. And um, this was the first time I read something from Senegal. And this book was originally written in French. It was translated into English by Modupe Bode Thomas. Um, this book was okay. <laughs> um, it was interesting. It has an interesting concept. It's about this Senegalese woman, a middle-aged woman, who is just recently widowed. And... Um, the, while the story is, uh, uh, is taking place, uh, this woman is just, uh, she's just done with uh, her husband's funeral. And so uh, this novel takes the form of a long letter written by this woman, Ramatulai, um, addressed to her best friend, Aisatu, who is living in the United States. So it is in this letter that we discover that Ramatulai's marriage um, to her recently deceased um, husband is was not a particularly happy marriage. Initially it started well but eventually it sort of dissolved when the husband decided to take a second wife uh, without uh, Ramatulai's uh, permission or uh, knowledge. Um, so it is in this letter we get to know the state of her marriage but Aside from that, we also get to know about uh, Ramatulai's life as a whole, you know, as a, as a woman uh, living in a rather um, restrictive patriarchal society in Senegal at that time. And she vents quite a lot in this letter. Um, she pretty much talks about her views on how 
women stand in the society at the time. And there are a few things that I like about this. I like how the uh, how the prose feels quite passionate. You know, you can really see that the author has a strong sense of passion towards uh, women's right um, and women's experience uh, in the writing. So that is definitely there. Um, I also like how the character of Ramatula is kind of layered. She's not. She's not. A Mary Sue. Um, her character is kind of complex. Uh, she does, uh, for the most part, I agree with the things that she says, but there are certain things that I also don't agree with, um, and that is totally cool. And uh, I also like how this character, um, through this character, we are able to see other characters as well, but they are not painted as um, one-dimensional characters. Like for example. Uh, Ramatulai, she is obvious unha obviously unhappy about the fact that she, um, her husband has a second wife. But this novel does not paint the second wife as a villain in this book, nor Ramatulai sees the second wife as straight, you know, uh, uh, just a villain, but rather uh, someone who is, um, I would say, well described. Um, um, fleshed out in this book, um, the you know the motivation of that second wife is uh, explained, and it really feels like um, you're engaging with a um, layer <clears throat> layered writing in this book. So I kind of appreciate that. Um, although there are certain things that sort of kind of make this book lukewarm a little bit. Um, I don't really like how certain parts just feel kind of info dumpy. <laughs> and it kind of uh, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense because this book is written uh, this book is written as a letter by the main character to her best friend who is also a Senegalese. And But sometimes there are certain parts in this uh, novel where certain customs, certain terms or rituals or uh, cultural things are explained. Like, it doesn't make sense for Rama to like to explain to her best friend what this, this thing in Senegal, this particular ritual is for. You know, it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> um, but I think, you know, if, if when, when I thought about that, it also kind of made me think of another thing. Like, uh, you know, this, this, how this book is presented as a letter for a best friend. But what if this book is actually a letter that is not really delivered? You know, so I think that's kind of an interesting point to, uh, to kind of have. For this book as well, so that that is something a little bit meta, I think. <laughs> but still, you know, um, there are a lot of ways uh, to to not be in for dumpy. You know, if even if you want to make this letter as you know, you, you want to interpret this whole letter structure of the novel as you know something else. I still think that some parts that are in for dumpy. Um, to be, you know, something that you can easily do away with. So, that's that. Uh, it's an interesting book, but I gave it like, um, I gave it like three out of five stars. So it's still a, a, a nice book. I would love to recommend that to everybody. So, um, moving on to the last one. I have this book by uh, Sheena McKay, The Orchard on Fire. So, the Orchard on Fire is kind of like a, um, uh, I would say that it's a um, coming of age novel, or yeah, it has a little bit of that coming of age element to it. Um, the novel is framed in such a way that we see the main character in the present day as an adult, and uh, after the first chapter or so, uh, the novel goes into the main character's um, uh, the main character's childhood, 
in the 50s, um, set in Kent, uh, in Scotland. Ooh. I got a coin from the clothes. <laughs> um, okay, so a bit of correction. It is England, not Scotland. The story is set in a village in Kent in England. Um, I think I got confused with the first book, which is set in Scotland. But uh, for this one, it is set in England. Uh, so yeah, a bit of correction there. Uh, continue. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so no, the novel, uh, the bulk of this novel is about the uh, character's childhood. Um, although, uh, one thing that I feel kind of uh, a bit, something that just doesn't like, something that feels kind of amiss to me is that we are introduced to this character, this main character as an adult in the first chapter, but I don't really get like why we need to know this main character. You know what I mean? Like, um, why is this main character here? Uh, what does this main character want? Uh, I don't really know. It's not really established in the in the first chapter, or maybe I missed something. But uh, it just doesn't feel like you know it's there. But anyway, um, in the next chapter we go back. We go to her childhood in the fifties, and that's pretty much uh, you know this whole book all the way until the second to the last chapter, where we return. You know, for the last chapter we return to uh, the main character's present as an present life as an adult, um, kind of like serving as a uh, an ending to this novel. But anyway, uh, the main character's childhood, uh, two things, two interesting things that happened to this character. So uh, this character's name is April and she is the daughter of um, pub owners, her parents are pub owners, and uh, things, two interesting things that she wants to talk about in her childhood, her best friend, Ruby, who is a bit of a troublemaker, and also how one particular creepy old dude named Mr. Greenish has been trying to uh, sexually groom and uh, sexually groom and harass her. So. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with stories that is very heavy on uh, sexual assault and sexual harassment, uh, you know, this book is pretty heavy on that. So you might want to pay attention to that um, because it does get really heavy on that. What I find kind of interesting about this book is that I really like how it presents its story. Uh, especially pertaining to her friendship with this uh, Ruby girl and also the sexual harassment and abuse that she has been facing uh, with this particular old guy. Um, the way those two subplots are written, they are written in this like really uh, honest way that uh, there is a very clear there is a very clear um, sense of emotions, feelings that the character is having and uh, and it's not something that is presented as just like black and white you know with for example with this friendship you know it's this is how the friendship is like this is how the character feels that's it and when it comes to the sexual harassment this is how the character feels that's it so you get a uh, layered feelings for all those things, especially with the subplot involving the sexual harassment, you can really feel that April as a, a young a young girl in you know, the kind of um, anger, fear, um, guilt and confusion that she's feeling over this whole thing. Um, it is to me it is very well written. So uh, I really like that aspect. Um, but uh, something that I just feel that is not really there is that um, so this novel is about yeah, the friendship and also the sexual harassment. The friendship part is something positive, the sexual harassment is not. 
uh, and you know we we go back and forth sort of between these two elements and there are also other elements in the childhood that is being explored but we also we mainly go through back and forth between between these two and sometimes it feels like it can get kind of uh, you know, the, the mood whiplash feels kind of bizarre you know on one uh, one chapter you feel kind of happy or at least feel wholesome and then suddenly the whole thing just gets like really dark and disgusting and creepy and when I say disgusting the sexual abuse part is really really disgusting in this book and creepy and then after that it gets kind of wholesome again with April and her family and her friend and then it gets kind of creepy again it it, it just doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel uh, like like the theme feels all over the place. You know, the 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 tone feels all over the place. Not the theme, the tone. The tone feels all over the place. Uh, it doesn't really establish like this is the general mood of this whole novel. Like you can get a novel that is a mixture of different moods. That's totally fine. A lot of novels do that. But then with this novel, it's, it's like you get bright and sunny and then after that you get dark and dank again. And bright again and then dark again. And bright again and dark. It's, it is strange. Um, it's just kind of strange. Especially when, when you consider the, um, the creepy old dude subplot. Um, that part I think really overshadows everything else to me I think because it is really um, strongly written right? um, well written in this book so um, it sort of swallows this book but then the tone doesn't really agree with that so there is a bit of incongruence there anyway those are all of the books that uh, I want to talk about in this video and I realized that I've been talking more than folding <laughs> so I'm gonna continue folding my stuff uh, yeah um, anyway I got a piano now and lately I've been kind of learning to play some new stuff on the piano it has been kind of a while since I last regularly played a piano and yeah I guess it's, it has been kind of fun you know um, playing songs by Shakira and Kylie Minogue <laughs> um, yeah but I don't think I'm like really good at that yet so um, yeah those are kind of like the main things I have I've been having so far these days, you know, I've been kind of fun. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go back to my cozy clothes folding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.